Hello, Kaiju campers. Welcome to Camp Kaiju. This is Monster Movie Talk. I am your counselor. I don't know if we're going to go that far, but if you want to, let me know. Anyways, I will be breaking down the 1963 Toho picture known as Matongo. Matango, Matongo. Let's tango. It takes two. Anyways, in America, it is also known as Attack of the Mushroom People. But this movie is not really known in America at all. So with that in mind, I'm going to call it Matango. And before I dive into my analysis, my breakdown, my um, behind the scenes, bit of bits of trivia, my good, the bad, and the downright campy, I'm going to do some little plugs here to tell you a little bit about Camp Kaiju. Uh, you can follow and engage on Instagram, Letterboxd. Um, we have t-shirts I'm wearing right now and um, lots of other cool things um, in the works. I'll let you know that this is the penultimate episode of season one. I have been doing this on a weekly basis all year and I am bringing season one to a close at the end of November then gonna come at you hard for season two um, but we'll get there we'll get there for now um, just know that we got Matongo and uh, the last episode I'll let you know at the end of this episode here so Matongo directed by Ishiro Honda he, you know, you know him, you love him. He was the main uh, dude at Toho Studios. He directed the original Gojira in 1954. He directed Rodan in 1956, Mothra, and a buttload of other kaiju films. Not just Godzilla, mind you. Anything and everything in between. Um, and um, as you, as I, as as I will get to, uh, Matango was um, sort of a unique movie in his um, portfolio. So the uh, joining Honda, um, his partner in crime, Aiji Subaraya, is doing the special effects. And the cast is just a who's who of other Toho mainstays. Um, we have Akira Kubo as Professor Kenji Mirai, and Kubo is a familiar face. He was in Invasion of Astro Monsters, Son of Godzilla, and Destroy All Monsters, all in the 1960s. Then we have Kenji Sahara as Senzo Koyama, and Sahara, he's one of my favorites. Um, he's in like a dozen other kaiju movies from the time period. Uh, some of my favorites are Gojira, Rodan, Mothra vs. Godzilla, but literally his resume is stacked with kaiju films. Um, Yoshio Tsuchiya as Masufu... <laughs> oh boy. Yoshio, Yoshio Tsuchiya as Masafumi Kasai. He is also a veteran, um, also known for Monster Zero, Destroy All Monsters. Miki Yashuro as Akiko Soma, Kumi Mizuno as Mami Sekiguchi. She was in Invasion of Astro Monster, War of the Gargantuas, Ebra, and a bunch of other Godzilla movies specifically. Um, and then rounding out the cast, Hiroshi Tachikawa and Hiroshi Kutsumi. So it's actually a small cast. That was it. Um, and it's one of the strengths of this movie. Honda wanted to kind of get away from the big, big blockbuster monster movies that he had been directing up until this point and wanted to do something smaller, more intimate. And he got it. He got a, a, a intimate show with literally all of his friends. What, what, um, theater creator, movie maker, doesn't want that kind of experience. Uh, it's awesome. So anyways, the movie Matongo was inspired partly by Tales of the Bermuda Triangle, 
ooh, what could the movie be then? I haven't gotten to the synopsis yet. But um, think of the Bermuda Triangle and a 1907 short story by an author named William H. Hodgson. And the movie, or sorry, the book is about people on a pleasure boat who uh, run aground on a strange island and encounter a strange fungus that absorbs humans upon contact. Yeah. And what do you know? That's what Matongo is ultimately about. It is about these people on a yacht who who basically uh, go recreate the, the show Lost, but with mushrooms. Yeah, wild. So I'll read you the synopsis here just so you can know what the hell I'm talking about. And then we'll all have a good time when I break it down for you. Okay. So the movie opens in a Tokyo psychiatric ward. A lone man tells his tale. A group of seven people are cruising on a sailing yacht when a fierce storm brews up. The owner wants to maintain course. The wind breaks their masts. The waves take out the radio and engine. They drift helplessly through calm, foggy seas. Eventually, they drift up to a fog-shrouded island. It is uninhabited. They find an old fungus-encrusted old research ship on the other side of the island, but no trace of the crew or passengers. The captain's log warns not to eat the mushrooms. The crew... Ah, food and supplies begin to run low for our seven crew members. Tensions rise and the old social order crumbles. The crewmen ignore the skipper's authority. The rich man cannot buy obedience. The star uses seduction and a ploy for power. The writer seems to be going mad. So this is where it is kind of like Lost or Gilligan's Island even, where you have a great blend of characters from different facets of society. You have the the showgirl, you have the writer, you have the the rich man, you have the skipper. Um, yeah, it's it's important to the way Honda wanted to tell this story. And I'll get to that in just a little bit. Almost done here with the plot. So, so the so the ship warns not to eat any of the mushrooms. Well, they then do eat the mushrooms, and uh, they are at first satisfying, soothing, and narcotic. One by one, the castaways join in, becoming strangely placid yet insistent that the remainder join them. Eventually, only the professor and his girlfriend remain as untainted holdouts. The mushroom people surround the couple on the beached ship. While the professor fights off some mushroom people, other mushroom people carry off the girl. When the professor finds her in the mushroom forest, she has eaten and become one of them. Ah! He fights to escape the surrounding mushroom people and makes it to the partially repaired yacht. This he sails until picked up by a ship. Back in the psych ward, he finishes his tale. Unbelievable? He turns to face the light, revealing that his face has fungal lumps on it. Uh. So, yeah, spoiler alert. It's a fantastic ending um, that you kind of see coming. It's, it's, you know, it's not a surprise in that it's, like, completely new. It's an age-old twist where you, you see the guy in the beginning and, like, his face is hidden and then you're like, oh, wait, yeah, you're, you know what? I've never seen his face. I bet there's something up with it. And you wouldn't be wrong. So yeah, Mushroom People. I mean, the American title is apt. It is, it is Attack of the Mushroom People. I believe Matongo means mushroom in Japanese. So I don't know. Take your pick on titles there. Um, Ishiro Honda wanted to... So through this movie like all of his movies, he wants to provide uh, social commentary on the issues of the day. In past episodes, you know, with Gojira, he obviously wanted to touch on the very recent atomic fears in Japan. In Mothra, he was commenting on increased American control over the Japanese government and, and life. With Matongo... According to him, I'll let you read his words before I offer my two cents. That sounds wise. 
So Honda said, quote, around this time, remember 1963, there were people who started to be Americanized or have a very modern lifestyle. There were rich people who sent their kids to school in foreign cars, that kind of thing. We tried to show that type of social background in this film. And remember, that's what I was saying about the um, writing each of the characters as different facets of society, just to show A, that we have these different characters, but then B, how, how do they work and not work together? So I really enjoy his comment on um, classism and how and how we may not uh, attain mobility um, within our social spheres. Now, my two cents is that wasn't overt enough for me. I didn't really pick that up on that uh, while watching Matango. But now that I know it, I can see that. So, you know, it, it, it does lend credence to my uh, viewing. I definitely want to watch it again. But in the moment, you know, eh, it's up for interpretation. So the movie was released in August of 1963. In the U.S., it wasn't released until 1965. And it was actually released straight to video or <laughs> straight to TV. And it was Honda's first movie to be uh, to not have a theatrical release in the United States. So I find that interesting, just as like a telltale, like okay, where where is where are monster foreign monster movies uh, being handled by American markets? Maybe losing a little the, little bit of esteem that they once had. Um, I just think that's an interesting thing. Um, and, you know, is that a cause and effect here? I don't know. But Matongo was basically relegated to obscurity, at least in America, uh, quickly after its release. Um, I read that there were um, TV showings, this and that, through like the 70s and 80s. But, yeah, I certainly had never heard of this movie until this year when I started Camp Kaiju. I, I saw people posting pictures of toys of mushroom people on bicycles and I had to ask I was like what is this this is a movie and they were like yeah you got to check out Matongo and I was like okay sign me up well fortunately I caught it on Tubi so it was free which is always great which uh, I do want to say is why I'm not covering Frankenstein Conquers the World on this episode um, I know I had said that I might have been doing that, but I couldn't find it streaming. So shame on me. Um, next time I'll be more proactive, but I'm really glad Matango was streaming and I would recommend you check it out. Um, so as far as the good, the bad, and the downright campy, I, I really enjoyed the creepy atmosphere of the movie. Like, Honda honestly plays this or directs this as more of a horror movie than a monster movie, like a kaiju movie. And it's totally effective. I was getting Frankenstein vibes. I was getting Island of Dr. Moreau vibes. Um, it was it was awesome. And then I was getting Lord of the Flies vibes or the Thing vibes when the cast suddenly starts turning on each other and there's paranoia run amok um, those were all really effective storytelling elements that came together very well the creature design is great uh, it's very visceral it's grotesque um, the makeup on so like there's various stages of mushroom people you have people who are just be who have like just eaten the mushrooms and are starting to turn and they've got like weird green shiny warts on their faces um i read that this was reminiscent of the atomic of the radiation burns people suffered in the atomic bombs yep totally buy that that adds another level of 
awfulness uh, to my to my review that um, is is great as far as storytelling goes. And then you have like the final form with the mushrooms, and it doesn't look as silly as it sounds. I promise you, it's it's creepy, man. It's good because, um, like, honestly, is there a worse fate than being turned into a mushroom? Like who write who like this dude who wrote the 1907 short story? Where did he come up with that? He just like looked at a mushroom. You know what he did? He ate a mushroom, and had a trip and had a vision of himself on an island with other mushroom people. Yep, that's what happened. Um, and thank you, thank you for that. Giving us uh, over a hundred years worth of um, killer mushroom material. That's a weird subgenre that, uh, hey, maybe I will explore more on Camp Kaiju. Um, so back to the actual movie. The camera work is also very uh, deliberate. Uh, the, the camera angles are off kilter a lot of the times. They're unsettling. Obviously, they, the camera work is mirroring the mental state of our characters. I love that little touch. Um, and yeah, so through that and the, um, the mushroom people themselves, like Honda dismantles classism in this movie. And, and, and he also, he does critique the American, sort of the Americanization of Japan at this time, because you're watching the, you're watching them eat mushrooms and the movie becomes increasingly more trippy, like a total 1960s drug trip. And it's like, oh, oh, I, I see. You're taking a shot at maybe American counterculture influencing traditional Japanese culture. You're like, okay, okay, Honda, I see you. I get it, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, but what's most fun is that at one point I was like, oh snap, I don't, I don't know if pe- if this is real at, even at all or if, like people the characters are literally just on a trip and this mushroom sort of phantasmagoria is in their minds there's a lot of layers in a seemingly simple movie so that was good the bad ironically are these characters that I've just described because they are purposefully written to be terrible people and because the actors are so good at portraying terrible people, it's really hard to sympathize with terrible people. And it's hard to get invested in them when they one by one do meet their demise. You're kind of like, oh, good. Like, I don't know, there's... I felt like there was a missed opportunity for real character investment from the screenwriter and like really fleshing out these characters. So typical monster movie stuff, right? But I was hoping that in a project on a more intimate scale, we might have greater emphasis on the drama within the the characters portrayed. But such is the life of a kaiju fan. Um, and then kind of along those same lines, there are only two women in the movie and they're continually, constantly harassed and berated and threatened physically. And like, it's fine because it's a character choice. Like the characters are terrible people. We would expect them to treat women that way. But when it's the only character choice and the only note throughout the movie, it kind of wears on you a little bit. That's just my modern sensibility. Um, but you know, you're kind of you, you can't really ignore it, is what I'm saying. However, <laughs> uh, switching to the downright campy, something else you can't ignore is the obvious. I mean. Time out. I'm just going to preface this by saying um, when it comes to, you know, interpretation of art, it's all subjective. One man's Picasso is another's Mr. Potato Head. I don't care. 
Um, so I'm just going to tell you what I saw. I I saw penises everywhere in this movie. Like, I, w I never realized how phallic a mushroom was until you see, like, the, the sped-up time warp of mushrooms growing in the forest. And... And that is supported by the characters. Like you have these men who are fighting over the women and and then they stop fighting over the women and then they, then they start fighting over mushrooms. These very large, fast growing mushrooms. And then they start turning into mushrooms. And you're like, everyone's turning into a penis. Does everyone have penis envy? Why is everyone's ego so big? And, I, you know, who knows if this is what anybody was thinking, but it is there, and I have to comment on it. How can you not? Oh, there's also a weird moment with um, uh, turtle eggs. They're looking for turtle eggs for food. They find the eggs, and they also find um, a taxidermied turtle with no eyes and I was I was just like I was putting this turtle symbolism this uh, female fertility turtle symbolism together and the destruction of it and I was like that's interesting interesting so we had the destruction of the female presence and the uh, encouragement of the male ego and I was like this is adding a fascinating layer to an already fascinating movie so so yeah I mean I think you know I think it does stand the test of time ultimately I think I would stop short of giving it like classic quote-unquote status because the characters the human characters themselves aren't um, super engaging or compelling or interesting enough to to hold my attention but with that said the special effects are incredible the the comment on the the social um well-being of japan at the time and its relationship with america it's all there home run to honda uh, honestly, I've never seen a movie like this. You probably haven't either. And for that, I would highly recommend Matongo. Uh, you could search that or Attack of the Mushroom People. Either way, uh, you'll find it streaming and it's 100% worth the watch. Yes. Thank you for hanging out, talking some mushroom people. Next week for the season one finale of Camp Kaiju. We're gonna go with Destroy All Monsters. Another Honda pick from the 1960s Toho catalog. It's a good one to go out on a bang with. So thank you, follow, like, and engage on Instagram and Letterboxd. Let me know your thoughts on all things Kaiju, all things monster movies. Check out the store, buy one of these cool shirts, link in the bio. And really, I can't appreciate, I don't appreciate enough um, interacting with you all, all the time. Thank you so much. Take care. Stay campy.